Hi, Rayo. Thank you so much for joining us in this uh, product school mock interview. So very quickly, I'll introduce myself. I'm Shireen. I have a total of 11 years of work experience, and I'm currently working as a product manager for Zalando. Zalando is a fashion e-commerce platform, and I'm working as a product manager in their marketing department. So this is the department which essentially offers brands and uh, you know the sellers on the platform opportunities to advertise on Zalando. Nice to meet you, Shireen. My, nice to meet you too. My name is Arayo Apara. I'm an aspiring product manager. Um, I have over nine years of experience consulting and contracting as a business analyst slash project manager for clients in the education, insurance, and banking space. Um, after I got my MBA in uh, strategic management and finance from Morgan State University, I started my career as a business analyst and um, I gradually progressed into managing data migration, integration, and enterprise-wide projects uh, for clients. My interest and in transition into product management, it came as a result of my curiosity and my aptitude for continuous learning and growth. I was a contributor and signatory to the recently launched product management manifesto. And um, I want to take all of these strong experiences to a new organization where I can help them build products, digital products that makes people's lives easier. I'm currently in between projects and my most recent uh, project has been um, managing a data and fund migration project for a Swiss firm. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Rayo, for the introduction. So very quickly, let us just walk through the format for the video. Um, I'm going to be walking through two mock interview questions with you. And uh, the first one is going to be more of a problem solving question. The second one is going to be more of a behavioral question. So I'm going to be taking notes while you answer, and then uh, we can take, say, 15 minutes for you to answer the first question and then 15 minutes to answer the second question. And then the last 10 minutes can be for feedback. Okay. Sounds good. All right, then let's dive right into it. So let's start with the first question. Um, assume that you are a product manager for a food delivery app. And over the last week, you have seen that the number of orders which are coming in have dropped by 10%. Mm -hmm. So as a product manager for this company, what is it that you would do? Um, so I will just walk you through the steps I will take. Um, coming in, you know, I would, on, I would start by communicating um, in an email memo to my stakeholders. And that, those would be the customer service teams, the operations and the engineering team and uh, senior leaders, letting them know that the, our app delivery is down by 10%. Um, I would schedule a quick call to inform them of the steps I will be taking. And these steps include understanding the issue uh, thoroughly in conducting an investigation into why this issue happened and recommending and implementing a solution. Um, the next step I will take would be to provide a rough estimate of when we can expect the result of my analysis uh, to be completed. Um, I would also identify the root course courses using a technique called cause and effect analysis. Um, and this would help us to, to brainstorm around all the possible causes of the problem um, and dig deeper into the true underlying cause. And I would also carry out an internal and external analysis of the applications um, operations to understand costs. The next step will then be um, defining the hypothesis statement. What is the real issue here? Um, we will come up with solutions that will devise solutions for fixing the issue. Um, mm -hmm. It may be a short term solution and also a long term solution. Um, and then from these responses, I will be able to create a detailed plan with an estimate of when the process should be complete um, and communicate this to all the stakeholders. Um, communicating my recommendations to stakeholders would also be another key um, highlight of the steps I will take. Um, and then we would, I would get management approval to move forward with the solutions. 
um, I would implement the recommended solutions, working closely with operations and engineering and the app developers, as well as the marketing team. Um, and then the next steps we would then do after that will be launching the solution um, in the next, well, if it's a marketing campaign and if it's an app, um, the next release um, and thanking everyone. We will continue to assess and monitor the impact of my recommendation using, you know, the defined product health metrics and to see sure. if the changes have helped our product performance. And then we'll repeat the steps all over again. Um, if the issue still persists, we'll continue to repeat these steps until we're able to identify the root cause and give updates uh, of the outcomes of the analysis to senior leaders in our weekly status reports. Sounds good. So let's start with the first step, which you mentioned to understand the root cause of the issue. How would you go about diagnosing that? Um, so, so I have some questions um, I would like to ask to help us to brainstorm on the reason. Um, but for the cost and effect analysis, I'm going to break down these questions into manpower, method, machines, materials, the environment, and the measurements. So for, for the okay. manpower, you know, my first question to you would be, were there any unexpected delivery delays from our partners and suppliers? And if so, you know, what happened? How did we handle it? Sure. So for now, the app just sees a drop in the orders. We don't see any change in the delivery times or any complaints about deliveries being late. Hmm, interesting. Um, and then in terms of the method, what, what metrics was affected? Uh, we just see that the orders have dropped by 10%. Okay. So, uh, uh, week on week. Weekly. And what was the source of the data that the, there was a drop in orders? Where did we get this data from? So, we have a daily metrics dashboard. The, these are standard numbers which are available across the company. Okay. Were there any malfunctions or errors in the database software that may have resulted in incorrect data? So... Uh, all other metrics seem on track, so um, uh, there were no other, uh, you know, there are no tracking issues as such that we can see in our database. So data seems to be accurate. Okay. Um, and then for the machines that we use, is this a mobile online desktop application? So we have uh, both the mobile and the web version, but the drop we see is across both platforms. Okay, so the drop was in all the platforms. And were there yeah. any major future release or updates to the app? No releases in the past two weeks. Any system crashes or outages that may have caused service to be slow? No, uh, stability metrics look about the same as they usually are. Interesting. Um, now, do we offer this service delivery service on all types of mobile applications or um, is it specific to a particular app, um, mobile, um, Android, iPhones? Um, so just to get that correct, you're asking if we offer uh, the app, the food delivery app on any specific uh, on either just Android or iOS? Yes. Yes, or if it's all of them. It's all of them. So if we have an app for Android and for iOS both. Okay. And do we know if there was any, um, if any of our payment channels reflected this downtime? No, we don't see any increase in the failure rates for our payments. Okay. So things are working as is. And on that end, and in terms of the materials, um, you know, do, do we know if there were any supply chain issues with our suppliers that week, this week. Um, what do you mean by suppliers exactly? Our suppliers are the people that um, we take, um, we, that, that make our orders available. So when we have customers placing orders, they're the ones that, you know, we go and pick up um, the orders from the restaurants, the grocery stores, supermarkets. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, from the restaurant's perspective, we don't see any change in uh, any issues with the restaurants either. Okay. Um, 
then for in terms of the, our environment um you know did this drop affect only the u.s markets or did we see it across both the u.s and international markets so the app is only available in the u.s right now and uh, we see this drop across our u.s markets okay and um what is do, do we have an idea of what demand is typically like at this time of the year the reason why i ask is because decline the decline in orders could be as a result of a, a seasonal demand for our products you know sure so if we compare the same time last year we don't see a difference in or we don't see essentially a decline in the number of orders so this trend is definitely new it's not something that we can account for okay and um who are who are our competitors um who are we that provide similar services you know when we look at our competitors you know I'm, I'm i'm trying to understand who are the people that we've been competing with closely on this um is there anything specific about the competitors that we want to look at yeah that, that's 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 going to be the next in the next stage of the analysis that's something we're going to analyze um if they had something different that they're doing that we are that we are not doing on our end um so so maybe we can we can talk about um the, them later on down the line um now in terms of uh measurements um how often okay you mentioned that we we check these um uh, th these these results came from our daily stats so so it appears that we we check it this um the, the metrics on a daily basis because that was supposed to know if this was a sudden drop or a gradual a uh, daily drop yeah and uh, so so this was uh, i mean uh this has been happening since last week okay. because and it's been a gradual drop since then okay and do we know around exactly what time the drop occurred we can check the time that it dropped uh but uh, okay. right now i don't have those statistics in terms of exactly what time the uh, drop happened okay and did we have any other related performance indicators that also dropped you know aside from um orders on app delivery any other you know performance indicators that we tracked that we may also have noticed a drop in e, um you can ask me any specific numbers that you're looking at and i can let you know if we see a drop in those as well okay because the um yeah, other metrics is uh, we we'll look at that down the line other metrics is that uh, may have been affected then the next step i would take right now is um doing an internal analysis of our operations um mm -hmm. we just completed the the cost and effect analysis for the internal analysis we you know i'm just going to be examining our products our internal processes and our technology systems and databases um in terms of the products i would say were there any recent developments uh with our food supply stores and food segment and the food segments that we cater to um any recent developments in the news in the media or just in their operations no change reported okay um and then we with our in with our own internal processes as a company uh where our food orders late um were there um any glitches in the steps and the actions that we take in involved in us taking orders and delivering to our customers uh, no so we don't see any increase in the delivery times neither do we see any reports of late deliveries more than normal so it's remained the same process is okay and um, for our technology systems were there any issues with our computers or our servers did we discover any new bugs nothing uh nothing which could have led to a drop in orders okay um the, our database um we also we are also looking at that as well i asked this because it would help us to analyze our kpis and to make better decisions you know are we sure that the data in our database is correct and up to date that's something that we need to look at um as well because this could result in incorrect data 
Um, so um, we check the backend systems and the data seems to be correct. So there is no flaw in or no bug in our tracking or any, um, you know, um, any concern with the accuracy of our numbers. Okay. I would also be in touch with the database um, administrators as well to, to clarify, to confirm this information. Um, and then this, this next step I'm going to take with you is the external analysis where we will be examining our competitors that we had identified um, and then um, barriers to entry, our suppliers and our customers. Now, mm -hmm. our customers, the, these are the users who have, who have been the most affected. Um, you know, we're trying to understand um, who are the users who have been most affected, the end users ordering food or our suppliers. Do, do we know which um, of these categories? I, uh, I did not understand the question in terms of, uh, it's gonna be a double-sided impact, right? So if yeah. our customers are ordering less, then it's the restaurants which are gonna be supplying. So the impact is on both, if that answers your question. Yes, it's double noted. And um, do, do we know, do we have an idea of who our most loyal customers are? Yes, we do. But uh, from the customer perspective, uh, there is, uh, from the perspective of most loyal customers, they are the least impacted by this drop. Okay. Um, now, I would, one of the things I would want to do is analyzing our, our mo most loyal customers and talking with them. Um, directly through one-on-one -on -one interviews and also send mm -hmm. them customer surveys to, to know if they placed orders or did not place orders during that week. So, and so that's mm -hmm. why I'm, I'm asking, the, you know, these, the, that preliminary question. Um, and then in terms of new entries into the markets, into the delivery app market, do we know if there were any new delivery apps in the market? You know, I've been looking it up as well. I didn't notice any, um, new entrants but because there are very low entry barriers to creating a food delivery app these days anybody can come up with an app but do we we've been tracking those um, so no new competitors have entered the market uh, we uh, are we have one big existing competitor and that still remains there are no new players same person okay now in terms of our suppliers um our suppliers you know these are the restaurants our food retailers the grocery stores, you know, we, we haven't seen any new developments in their operations. Are they operating according to the service, service level agreements that we have in place? Yes, they are. It seems like, okay. Now, for our competitors, going back to our competitors again, um, mm -hmm. did you, what substitute um, services are they providing? Now? Like, are there any new initiatives or things that they are offering? or that they started to offer that we are not offering. Um, this is an area that... Sure, so our biggest competitor, like I mentioned, has uh, started a major marketing campaign and they're offering really aggressive discounts on orders. Okay, so that's, that's uh, something I'm noting here because from what we've discussed so far, that seems to be um, a, re a recurring item. Um, so they have an aggressive marketing campaign noted. Okay, so my next question would then be in terms of the environment, um, you know, was there like any natural calamity that may have caused things to happen? Any power outages that may have affected our services? Nothing of that sort. Okay. Um, and then public, in terms of public relations um, and the media, you know, because I would mm -hmm. want to review our most recent social media comments, you know, were mm -hmm. there complaints? Have we been looking at those? Um, anything that came to your attention about um, negative uh, comments or notes on social media or complaints? No, nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing which stands out. That stands out. Okay, noted. Um, so I'm just as I've been 
we've been having this discussion. I've been brainstorming and putting all these um, notes together. And um, what I've come up, what I'm coming up with is an hypothesis statement of what the issue is. Um, as, a, as a company, we have been providing digital food delivery services to customers in the U.S. markets uh, mm -hmm. since 2015. Um, and this app is available on, on, on the mobile, um, iOS and Android devices um, across platforms. Um, but last week, we discovered a 10% drop in our online food delivery orders on mm -hmm. our platforms in the U.S. markets only. Um, mm -hmm. It seems like the reason for this drop is um, our competitors' actions. You know, that we have an, a major competitor. They have started to, to offer some, um, some, some services. They, they have been on an aggressive uh, marketing campaign and they are offering something to customers that we are not um, yet offering. It sounds, mm -hmm. sounds like that's, the, that's what is going on here. Yeah. That sounds good. So, uh, yes, that is correct. That is the reason for the drop. So once you figure this out, uh, how is it that, uh, how would you manage this situation in this case? Like you mentioned some of the next steps, what would be your recommendations? Okay. Um, so I, um, I have a few solutions that I uh, put in place. Um, the first one would be, you know, looking at our, our first of all, target our most loyal customers. Um, mm -hmm. Because these are the customers that we know that they would always make a repeat purchase. Um, we're going to come up with our own um, rewards, our own promotional offers as well. Um, and then I'm looking at the metrics. Uh, there are certain key metrics that I want us to be tracking aside from, you know, food delivery orders. Um, in terms of engagement and retention metrics, I want us to keep an eye on the daily active users and the unique visitors per day. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the order volume, I want us to also keep an eye on um, the average number of deliveries and orders per hour. Because when we're doing that per hour, we can instantly, at every hour we can instantly track if um, there's been a change compared to having to wait for a week or till, till the end of the day before we note that, oh, we've gone um, past or beyond the normal threshold of um, up, um, deliveries and orders per hour. Um, mm -hmm. And then for our, performance, for our performance metrics, I would keep an eye on the number of support tickets that were opened and closed. Um, yeah, this would tell, tell us if customers, you know, we're having an unusual amount of customers um, calling in, having complaints or things that need to be fixed. Um, the, 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 these are some of the, the, the key, key metrics I would look at. Um, and then even the churn rate as well, you know, the rate at which customers stop doing business or renewing or canceling over a period of time. Because that would tell that, oh, maybe they're going over, they're moving closer to the competitor side. Then from the DAU metric, um, that's the daily active users, I will be able to identify who are our most loyal customers. Um, I would offer them an incentive. And I'm looking at an incentive that says, um, if you place five orders, and now in this incentive, I'm trying to match or possibly even beat what our competitor is doing. So, ooh, after doing my research, you know, I'm going to say, okay, let's place, if you place five orders within a month, you get 20% off the next order. This, right. you know, attracts them to patronize our app more because we're matching up with what the competitor is doing in this area. Then for our unique visitors per day, you know, I would, based on this metric, there's, I, I would pull the data out, identify, you know, these who are the unique visitors, offer them an incentive that says something like place one order and get 15% of your next order. This would attract so, them to become a repeat customer. 
And so from this is essentially basically different marketing campaigns that you're going to be offering to different types of customers. Yes, yes, a different marketing campaign for different um, categories of customers, segmenting our customers, um, and then offering a campaign that would be um, suitable for them. And then from even having repeat customers, they can become more loyal customers. Mm, got so, it. Yes. Makes sense. All right. So thanks so much, Rayo, for this. And uh, <laughs> I had a yeah. few other steps I wanted to just go over um, with you. Uh, just to update you on how we're going to move forward with this. Um, we would, for, for us to, to, to launch um, this campaign, you know, implement it across our different platforms and everything, we, we would take, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm given a rough estimate of about four weeks um, to, to, to collaborate with our stakeholders um, and just put this um, out there on uh, social media and um, mm -hmm. have a press release, really public uh, statement. Yes, I would do this. Um, and then communicating this recommendations to stakeholders, that's the next step I will take. And then mm -hmm. we'll get management approval to move forward uh, with the solution. Um, there were our app de developers are going to be the one to implement this into the um, different areas of the application. And the marketing team would also um, I'll be working closely with the marketing team on this. Once we launch it, um, which will be out there in our next uh, marketing campaign and the next future release of the app. And um, we'll continue to assess and monitor the impact um, of this uh, recommendation using the key mm -hmm. product health metrics that I mentioned before and to see if the changes have helped our product performance. And we'll repeat the steps continuously um, if anything, if we, if we discover that it's not even making an, it's not making much of an impact, we will, con we will start the step all over identifying the root cause if the issue still persists. And we'll continue to give you updates, update you management, the senior leaders in our weekly status reports so that, um, you know, we can stay on top of things um, in this area. So that's, that's it um, for now. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks so much for that, Rayo. All right. Been a pleasure. All right. So thanks, Rayo, for answering the first question. Now we can move on to the next one. So the next one is a behavioral question. And the question is that, was there a time where you had a disagreement with the engineering team? Uh, what was the disagreement about and how did you work through the through that situation? Sure. Um, so so um, looking back through my experience, um, I haven't necessarily been in a situation where I was I had a disagreement with an, with the engineering team per se, but I've found myself in situations where I had to convince um, the engineering team to do something. Um, you know, and helping to facilitate um, a solution to an issue. Um, mm -hmm. so, and then, you know, that's how, I've, that's how I've helped them in this kind of situation. And I will talk about my experience um, with, um, while I was with the AIG Consumer Insurance Benefit Solutions. Um, we, we were just giving you, I'll, 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 it, I'll address this by, you know, putting this into the context, what happened, uh, the background information, identify, how identify the users, um, what the issue was, the impact to the customers, the tasks, um, the action, the steps that I took, and what was the result, the outcome. Now, the context of this um, issue was that um, we had just acquired a new software product, Winsure, for the group benefits business. And um, the software needed to be customized to meet the needs of the business. Uh, the customization involved identifying functional gaps in the features and functionalities that came with the software out of the box and translating them into requirements um, and that would be incorporated into future releases of the platform. The users for this platform are the underwriters, actuaries, benefits, administrators, claim adjusters, and analysts. And the issue that I observed here was that 
Um, whenever a user enters text, words, or phrases in the tool, and there is an error, uh, maybe like a typographical error misspelling, the application only underlines the text in red. It does not provide a suggestion to automatically correct the misspelling. Okay. I also identified the need to display the definition of words in like mm -hmm. small pop-up um, bubble. And so, so, I, so ideally a dictionary function would be the best, would be needed to be added to the tool. The impact mm -hmm. customer for this situation is that, you know, documents and information that has either stored or printed out from the tool we may include errors and misspellings. And this would require extra time and effort to either audit it, reward the text and sentences. And um, all this is bad for the image of, and the reputation of the company. Um, it's time consuming. And the, the, the task that I undertook in this role was as a business analyst on this team, um, my, my role was to identify gaps in the software, functionalities, things that were missing and write requirements that will customize and describe the needs of the business and share it with um, the stakeholders from the technology team. So mm -hmm. after I identified this issue with um, an, a dictionary function that would be, that would be needed, um, the steps that I took to address this was, I put it as an item on the agenda to be discussed with the team during our work session. Um, I created... Um just very quickly, Dio, who all are the technology stakeholders that you were working with on this? So I had application developers on the vendor, on the from the vendor side, because we had a third party vendor who was mm -hmm. uh, implementing uh, all the solutions and suggestions that we required. And we also had some technical um, team members in-house, mm -hmm. the AIG side of the business, who were also, you know, going through all these recommendations you know, as we're communicating it with um, the vendor. And then when they implement it, they also go over, they work together and to go over it to make sure that it's implemented correctly before it goes into testing, which I, 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 I do, I take as, as a, I test the, the platform as well. Does okay. That question? Yes. Okay. So um, I created a case you know, stating the urgent need for a dictionary tool. And um, I started, we started to brainstorm on the possible solutions um, for, for this. Sure. Uh, one quick question. Uh, since you said that this was an urgent need and you said that you worked on the impact of this, apart from uh, the uh, usability impact, which you mentioned, were you, did you quantify this impact in some way? to really understand the impact of revenue because uh, I want to understand how we decided on the urgency of this specific. Yes, so um, I, that's in, the, that's in the, the approach, the action that I um, took to evaluate um, the, the, the evaluate, the, the, I'd already quantified the impact. There was an impact analysis and that's how I came up with um, um, the idea that it's going to impact our bottom line um, it's going to require a lot of rework when we have documents um, and outputs from the system that have errors. So that means we'll have to start making corrections um, or having our developers go into the system and write code to correct the, the, the templates that were, coming, that were coming out of the platform. So this takes time and it um, will take time and resources from other things that we should be doing. Um, and it will impact even our, um, our delivery timelines. Um, so, 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 so when, when after we came to this point where we agreed mm -hmm. that, you know, we needed a dictionary tool um, and then brainstorming on the possible solutions. So I had this, I had my uh, work session with um, these stakeholders, especially from the engineering team and the business sponsor. Mm -hmm. And the engineering team from the vendor side, um, mm -hmm. they, they stated that, they had a dictionary function that they had used for their clients on prior mm -hmm. projects, and they would want to reuse it again and update it as needed uh, for this um, application. Okay. Well, the engineering team from in-house AIG, they expressed that they had an in-house um, AIG branded dictionary function that they had used mm -hmm. other consumer applications and they would like to plug it into the platform 
to be used again. Okay. While um, as a business analyst from the AIG side, I felt that these both options would not be efficient and cost effective. Um, um, an external provider like either Google or Yahoo, they have dictionary functions that can be plugged into the tool. Mm -hmm. So these were the three um, different schools of thought. And the approach and the action that I took was, um, I carried out an evaluation of the three options uh, using mm -hmm. cost-benefit analysis and also mm -hmm. analyzing the pros and cons of each solution. Um, mm -hmm. And then I organized another session with the stakeholders concerned to present my findings to the group. The mm -hmm. option one, which is um, using an existing dictionary tool from the vendor, it is mm -hmm. not most, it was not the most efficient. And the reason is because it may not always be up to date. Um, okay. it, require, it would require regular updating whenever there is a new release of the application um, mm -hmm. on upgrade. Um, and this is time consuming. It's, it consumes time and resources. And even, um, even with uh, collaborating between our company, between um, the, 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 the client, my company, and the vendor, you know, they would need, they would have to continually have these communications and re probably even reminders here and there um, about the need to update um, the, the dictionary. So I, I, I wasn't in support of this first option and I explained my reason, the reason why. Mm -hmm. um, the second option was to have an in-house dictionary from AIG. This mm -hmm. would so easily be customized because it's already branded with AIG. We've used it before. It's a process that we do, we, you know, it's, we can reuse again, but it will also need to be maintained um, and it will also require regular updates whenever a new release is done. And this will but, cost the business time and money. Sure, but isn't this a separate functionality already within AIG? So was it not already being updated and maintained by the existing teams? Yeah, it, it, it was being, it, it is, but it's not, um, it may not be the industry standard. Um, it's, it's, it's something that has been used before. Um, but I'm not even sure that they've updated it since the last time or, with, since, or since the last time it was used for another consumer application. Um, and I just felt like we needed something that would be, um, that would provide an industry standard definition of text and something we, I, I thought we needed better quality, you know, um, and an external dictionary provider like Google or Yahoo they have optimized processes for handling product upgrades. Um, they have um, good customer service. Um, mm -hmm. Even when we have new releases, um, they, they, are able, they are better able to manage. This is what they do. This is, it's a technology company. Um, they have mm -hmm. better systems for maintenance um, of all their applications. And they have a more up-to-date list of options, you know, because Google updates regularly and it's worldwide it's a global standard compared to aig standards that was you know the, the one that we have in-house was developed by developers in-house and some of mm -hmm. them have even left the company do you get so i just felt that um i i, I preferred us using an, an external provider and i stated my preference for google dictionary over yahoo mainly mm -hmm. because google is um they have more, they offer more services. It, they're more, it's more widely known and it's a technology company um, and they have stood the test of time, even with their other products. So um, I was, I, I, I made this presentation to, to my, all the, this, the engineering team um, and I was able to convince them um, to adopt Google Dictionary. Um, mm -hmm. The vendors development team, um, they, they agreed with this and they, um, we worked on implementing the solution, plugging it in into um, our uh, application. So we, that, that was how we customized um, our application to be able to, um, you know, automatically correct errors and typos. And um, this helped, the result of this was that it helped to eliminate the mistakes um, that came from the from templates, documents, outputs from the platform. Um, and, and as a result, um, you know, errors and rework was reduced drastically by over 40%. There was a 40% reduction. We were, at that time, was we were able to spend it on other 
um, more important um, things, and that helped us to save time um, and resources on this so, project. I would like to just dive a little deeper on these measures that you said. Uh, in specific, you said errors and rework reduced by 40%. So what metrics did you exactly measure after this release to understand the impact? Um, so what, what, had, how we had been before, before then, you know, we had mm -hmm. QA team, we had, we had testers who were, um, I was working closely with the UAT testing team. Um, mm -hmm. so anytime we're testing, auditing, um, the, 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 the scripts, the plot, the, 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 the documents, you know, we, mm -hmm. we, we see some of these issues and then we have like, a we have like a spreadsheet where we track all of this and then take note, um, inform the development team, and then they make changes um, into the um, application. So the, these, the, this time that we spent doing this was drastically reduced because now we don't, we don't have all these errors coming up and then the QA team can focus on testing other issues in the application because before then the errors that came from the mistakes and the er the, the, the um sorry the issues that uh, that came from the the mistakes and errors in the template those constituted like a major percentage of um the issues the bugs that were coming out of the system so that was a major mm -hmm. source of um bugs but we, we once this had been um implemented the, we this helped to eliminate um, a lot of those issues arising from um, errors in templates and documents. So that's how we were able to track it using um, our, our testing, working closely with the testing team, um, and then mm -hmm. add, add Excel data. All right. All right. Anything else you want to add, Ryo? Um, I believe that that would be all. Um, uh, um, you know, answering all the, the, the going into details of all the steps I took, and um, yeah, it was a successful um, launch of the application. All right, sounds good. All right, so Ryo, we have about ten minutes. I guess we can go into the feedback. So uh, uh, taking a step back, then uh, let's start with the feedback for your first question, which was, uh, you know, you were a food, uh, you're the product manager for a food delivery app and you see the orders have gone down by 10%. So what do you do as a product manager? So um, uh, the good thing which I liked about your uh, answer was the fact that you covered a lot of ground. And uh, you, you know, laid out the structure for me in the beginning in terms of how you want to do that. You covered a lot of ground. There were a number of different, uh, you know, uh, different aspects that you looked at to really diagnose the problem. So that was great. And I also like the fact that, you know, to, uh, towards the end, you summarized your findings and you clearly stated that this was the reason why we saw a drop. Now, going back, uh, going into what can be improved, I feel that uh, some of the questions that you gave were repeated again. So the first bit of questions which we answered no to, we went into it again. So for so example, from the supplier point of view, or even, uh, you know, the point of view, I think there was something else. I think that took a lot of time, but that was already established that that is not the root cause. The second is uh, I felt that oh, even while going through the hypothesis, I think that structure could have been improved a little better. So when you're looking at different aspects, uh, you split them into too many different categorizations. I think that can be improved more from a product perspective. I think there were some key things which uh, could have been spoken about much earlier in the conversation because as a PM, you would have looked at them immediately. So for example, the performance metrics, which you spoke about uh, towards the end, I think that should have been one of the first things that you spoke about and, uh, you know, talk uh, more about those metrics, what other metrics you would have looked at. And even the structure could have been made, maybe simplified a little bit. You could, uh, the content was correct, but maybe the structure could have been simplified. 
The other thing which uh, we could have done better was about um, once we've uh, you know really nailed down the hypothesis or the reason for the fall, I think then going into different reasons, just uh, you know, just uh, looking into different aspects would not make that much sense because we're trying to diagnose what the problem is. Once you found out the problem, then it doesn't make too much sense to probably go and figure out what are the other aspects which could have been, uh, which you could have looked into. Because at the end of the day, if we've identified one reason, then it makes sense to go deeper into that reason. And the last feedback is from a recommendation perspective. I think when you, you were talking about loyal customers, whereas, uh, you know, in the conversation, I'd mentioned that the drop in loyal customers is not as much. So maybe the focus should have been not on the loyal customer base because the drop has not been on that. So the solution focus should have been on the other types of customers and maybe loyal customers could have been, uh, we, we didn't need to really go into the detail there. Okay. So that's broadly the feedback there. I think just uh, the content was all there, just uh, the structuring and maybe making it a little more concise uh, would have worked, uh, uh, could help it, uh, you know, help improve your uh, uh, answer. Okay. All right. All right, then moving on into the next question. I think what I really liked about your answer was you gave me, you spoke about the different options very, very clearly. You know, when we're looking at you try to build a good structure around giving me some context, making me understand the users, and then, you know, going into the specifics of each of the options, what the, uh, you know, and why you selected one particular option. And uh, what I feel could have been improved was, um, I think, uh, it towards the initial part, it the product was not a hundred percent clear in terms of the usage. I understood that better when you explain how the impact was measured. So I think that's something that can be improved. Overall, I feel that uh, this example was not such a great representation of conflict management because that conflict wasn't coming out that uh, wasn't coming out that much in the answer. And uh, well, the third thing, which I think would have really helped was around, you know, you spoke about why option, uh, say the third option, which you suggested was better. But I think one thing that we missed out on was the costing bit of it, because the third option, when you're using, uh, you know, external uh, uh, dictionary, there is a cost involved with, uh, in that. So when we did the cost benefit analysis, we spoke about the benefit, but we didn't really speak about the cost aspect of it there from the company perspective. So I think that is also something that could have been added. Uh, we did speak about the impact of it, but I think uh, maybe just at the onset, if you would have given specific metrics that, um, I mean, we spoke about it, but uh, if it came in the structure of the answer that would have just made it you know that would have just ended the conversation or ended the answer at uh, uh, you know very very smoothly and uh, like a logical end to the answer uh, I, I didn't get the last part of you know what you said given specific metrics how does that can you just uh, I... sorry yeah could you clarify what you meant the last point you made about giving a specific sure. metric that would close out the response so uh, no, so uh, what I said that we spoke about the metric when I dwell deeper into when I asked you further questions, where do you explain the exact metric that you looked at? But what I said was what I meant was that if that was automatically that detail was automatically provided when you were talking about the impact of it, then it would have been a good logical close to the answer. Okay. Um, okay, so it seems like you would have, would have preferred me to talk about that metric um, in detail at the end of the um, response. That's what yes, like that's so, correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, your feedback is well noted. Um, I'll continue to work on these um, areas as well. Um, and um, thank you for. Um, being um, available to uh, work with me on this journey. 
it's been a thank pleasure. you so much Trio. it's been great for me as well and best of luck for your transition into product management thank you as well um thank all you. the best all the best thank yeah. you bye-bye